An Angel for Solomon Singer, written by Cynthia Ryland. Solomon Singer lived in a hotel for men near the corner of Columbus Avenue and 85th Street in New York City, and he did not like it. The hotel had none of the things he loved. His room had no balcony. He dreamed of a beautiful balcony. It had no fireplace, and he knew he would surely think better sitting before a fireplace. It had no porch swing for napping and no picture window for watching the birds. He could not have a cat. He could not have a dog. He could not even paint his walls a different color, and oh, what a difference a yellow wall or a purple wall would have made. It is important to love where you live, and Solomon Singer loved where he lived not at all. And it was this that drove him out into the street each night. It was dreams of balconies and purple walls that took him to the street. Solomon Singer wandered. He was a wanderer by nature anyway. He had grown up in Indiana, a place absolutely famous for wandering. So much of Indiana was mixed into his blood that even now, fifty-odd years later, he could not give up being a boy in Indiana, and at night he journeyed the streets, wishing there were fields, gazed at lighted windows, wishing there were stars, and listening to the voices of all who passed, wishing for the conversations of crickets. Solomon Singer was lonely, and he had no one to love, and not even a place to love, and this was hard for him. He didn't feel happy as he wandered. One evening, somewhere between Columbus Avenue and Central Park West, Solomon Singer wandered into a small restaurant called the Westway Cafe. He liked the name. He was from the Midwest and liked to imagine he was, each day, making his way west, that some day he would again be west, and so the name meant something to him. He opened up the plastic menu before him, and there he read these words, The Westway Cafe, where all your dreams come true. The menu told him how much hamburgers and bowls of soup and pieces of pie and other things cost, but it didn't put a price on his dreams. A voice, quiet like Indiana Pines in November, said, Good evening, sir, and Solomon Singer looked up into a pair of brown eyes that were lined at the corners from a life of smiling. Solomon Singer smiled back at the waiter and ordered a bowl of tomato soup and a cup of coffee and a balcony, but he didn't say the balcony out loud. The tomato soup was delicious, and he even got a second cup of coffee for free. And the smiling-eyed waiter told Solomon Singer to come back again to the Westway Cafe. Solomon Singer did the very next night. He ordered two biscuits and some bacon and a large glass of grapefruit juice and a fireplace, but he didn't say the fireplace out loud. The smiling-eyed waiter was glad to see him, glad to have him, and told him, come back again, and Solomon Singer did the very next night. For many, many nights, Solomon Singer made his way west, carrying a dream in his head, each night ordering up with his supper. When he reached the end of his list of dreams, the end was a purple wall. He simply started all over again and ordered up a balcony, but he didn't say the balcony out loud. And slowly and quietly with time, something happened. On Solomon Singer's walk, each night to the Westway Cafe, the streets began to move before him like fields of wheat, and he thought them beautiful. The lights in the buildings twinkled and shone like stars, and he thought them lovely, and the voices of all who passed sounded like the conversations of friendly crickets, and he felt friendly toward them. Rounding the corner off Columbus Avenue, seeing the lighted window of the Westway Cafe, Solomon Singer felt as he had as a boy, rounding the bend in Indiana and seeing the yellow lights of the house where he lived. Walking into the Westway Cafe, he felt as at home as he had in Indiana, and the smiling waiter greeted him as familiarly as his parents had once greeted him in Indiana, when he would come home from wandering the roads he loved. The waiter's name, it turned out, was Angel. Solomon Singer went to the Westway Cafe every night for dinner that first year, and he dines there still. He hasn't given up carrying a dream in his head each time he goes, and one of his dreams has even come true. He has sneaked a cat into his hotel room. 
Solomon Singer has found a place he loves, and he doesn't feel lonely any more. And if ever you are near the Westway Cafe, wishing instead you were in a field of conversational crickets beneath the shining stars, go inside. An angel will take your order, and Solomon Singer will smile and make you feel you are home.